Hi, this is Dr. Johnson, and this is a brief micro lecture on cancer and what we know a little bit about nutrition. This is very brief in general. I want to give an overview of cancer. Um, cancer is essentially a large group of uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. Cancer, cancerous what we would call tumors or tissues would be considered malignant, and then benign would be considered non-cancerous. There is really a lot of unknowns as to what exactly causes cancer in some people and doesn't cause cancer into others. There are some things that we know put us at higher risk. However, the solid evidence is still not profound with nutrition. In general, we know that poor nutrition does increase your risk of cancer. Um, more specifically, we know there's a higher risk of developing colon cancer um, with very poor diets, and that means foods that are high in processed meats, so things like salami or hot dogs, and then also low in fiber increase your risk of colon cancer. Other than that, there's not really a direct link that this particular food causes that particular type of cancer. One thing I do want to talk about, though, is that in a clinical setting, you're, when you're working with cancer patients, they require a high-calorie, high-protein diet, especially if they're undergoing chemotherapy. So chemotherapy basically kills off both the cancerous cells as well as healthy cells. So in order for us to help optimize their outcomes, we do want them to have a higher calorie, higher protein diet, which can be very challenging when you're not feeling well or if you don't have a good appetite. So things like appetite stimulants might be appropriate. And then also those supplemental shakes um, can also help increase the amount of calories and protein that is consumed in the diet. Now, this is not cancer, but I want to briefly talk about renal disease. Renal disease is kidney disease, and this therapeutic diet depends on if they're on dialysis or not. So someone who is not on dialysis requires a low-protein, high-calorie diet, and they must potentially limit all three or one of those following uh, minerals, so potassium, sodium, and phosphorus, because the kidneys help process out that, those three minerals and if the kidneys are not accurately working, they can get basically a buildup of potassium, sodium, and phosphorus in their body, which could be bad. Therefore, they need to limit the amount of foods that have potassium, sodium, and phosphorus. So if you think back to the vitamins and minerals, what foods contain potassium, sodium, and phosphorus? Potassium is found mostly in our fruits and vegetables, specifically the yellow and orange pigmented fruits and vegetables. Sodium is found in a lot of our processed foods. And then phosphorus is found in a lot of our animal protein foods, which can help when they're on a lower protein diet. The reason they need a lower protein diet is because, again, the kidneys are filtering out amino acids. And if their kidneys can no longer function properly, we can reduce the amount that their kidneys have to work by putting them on a low protein diet. With that low protein diet, though, they do require a little bit more calories. So as a reference point, if you... Think about the recommended intake for protein for a normal person. The guidelines currently is 0.8 to 1.0 grams per day. And someone who is non-dialysis, their protein requirements would be 0.6 to 0.8 grams per day. So you can see that's relatively low. Sometimes if you look at it, it's basically 45 to 50 grams of protein per day that they're limited to. Now, if a patient is on dialysis, their protein needs actually increase. They no longer need to restrict their potassium or sodium, but some might need to restrict their phosphorus. This is when they will work with the renal dialysis dietitian in order to determine that as well as their physician. So again, to give you a reference point, their protein needs are going to be about 1.25 to 1.5 grams per day. And that's because when they're sitting on dialysis, um, they're basically getting too much of the amino acid now removed, which means that they need to increase the amount of protein in their diet. A few other medical nutrition therapies that you may see are somebody with COPD or respiratory distress. They require a high fat diet, and that's because the fat is easier for their lungs to breathe. 
Diverticulitis is a condition that we discussed during the GI section. Diverticulitis is when these little pockets along the GI tract basically get inflamed and they require a low fiber, low residue diet, which is no nuts, no seeds, no skin. So things like the skin of an apple, the skin of a potato. And then when they're not inflamed, they have diverticulosis, which again are these little pockets here that we want to prevent food from getting in. So they require a high fiber diet to keep things moving through the GI tract.